8,325 pounds, three slides, and only one previous owner. This is a big triple slide bunkhouse wildcat here at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. Very similar to things like the 34 TSB Cougar that we'd offer here today. Um, we were the original selling dealer of this product, actually. It, uh, it came from here. And the only reason it's here is the, uh, the owners, the gentleman of the household who normally does the towing, he is an electrician who works quite a bit. And the lady of the household wanted something smaller that she felt more comfortable towing with the kids when the husband was off working. So they are swapping this out and downsizing dramatically. Actually from this big triple slide like 35 to 37 foot camper to something like a little 19 foot single axle apex ultralight bunkhouse. So very late model, very well kept, only a couple little surface blemishes that I'll point out as we go. Overall this is going to be a steal of a deal for someone. Now with the slides closed, you're going to be able to get to the front master bedroom and bathroom very easily, but for everything else, you're really going to want to open those slides up. So let's get that done so you can see her the way she's intended to be used. All opened up, you can see it is clean, it's been well kept, has certainly not been abused. Uh, again, the only reason it's here is just because they wanted to downsize to something that both uh, of the parents in the household felt more comfortable and confident towing. Um, you know, really, it, it, this is, uh, this, this is awesome because this is like, imagine if somebody bought an Escalade all loaded up and then they decided, eh, it's a little big of a vehicle. We want to swap down to a Malibu. <laughs> That's basically what happened. And they did it in a very late model fashion. So, you know, you're getting a nearly new camper here. Now these are six foot nine tall inside. They are extra tall inside, which offers just a nice bigger open feeling throughout, but also more headroom in the bunks, taller slide outs, and a taller shower, which is something I appreciate as well as bigger cabinets. And speaking of cabinets, holy cow, is this thing loaded with kitchen storage. Now I don't want to miss anything, so I'm actually going to start over here at the entertainment center, or as my favorite phrase lately has been, pantrytainment center. Um, because, you know, you don't want to waste any level of storage space, and they certainly didn't seem to do that here in this Wildcat. Everything opened right up, but it's really behind the entertainment center that you start to realize how much storage is here. Now, what's cool is there's also an additional closet on the opposite side of the partition wall within that pantry right there that uh, functions as a, uh, uh, like a bunkhouse closet. There's a, you know, a section behind that. Now, anywhere you see countertop, you're going to see storage space, and the combination of the recessed stove top and all the big counter space makes for plenty of prep room. Plep plume. <laughs> it's early. I am suffering from some allergies currently this time of year, so I'm medicated. So if I'm goofier than normal or more discombobulated, well, that's the reason, ladies and gentlemen. And then just that little glowing Wildcat W down there. Just kind of really set this one off in the end of things and, and gave it a, a pretty neat, unique sort of look and feel in here with just a truckload of cabinet space. A couple more things before we move out of the kitchen. You can see all the original owner's manuals and everything are still present and accounted for. But under this stainless sink here in this island with that high-rise sprayer faucet, you just have as much storage as they could possibly put in here. Now you're looking at this going, uh, you're talking about storage and I'm looking straight at a panel. You notice that there's like plumbing and stuff behind it. They didn't want shifting cargo to potentially damage that plumbing. But you see over here we've got a nice space for a, a waste basket. And then below both sides of this extra large dinette, you've got full storage access below each of the dinette benches. Now, um, interestingly, if you measure this out, this actually measures out to roughly the width, or the length, however you want to call it, um, of a full U-dinette. But instead what they did is they made it a very large, very comfortable four-person adult-sized dinette. Uh, because the seats here are actually extra deep. And one of the things that we noticed as we walk through here is that stuff like your sofa is just holy cow comfortable. And it's from a different supplier that you normally find in most of the RV business. Um, and there's nothing wrong with um, the uh, the furniture supplied by LCI, like the Thomas Paine collection that you find in a lot of new RVs. But this was something that was a little more expensive, a little thicker, a little more plush, directly across from the entertainment center. But you notice the little bucket molded seats almost in that thing. It is super comfy, and there actually is an inner spring height bed in that. Um, 
Now your entertainment center over here is right on point because it's on boardwalk and park place from that sofa. But you see that this TV can actually swing around with a double jointed swing arm. So if you want it to face all over the place, it's very easy to do so. If it wants to face the dinette or even the kitchen, it can all it can swing around all the way there. And up here, simple uh, Bluetooth DVD system, um, and you can get the uh, J Control app on your phone and I. Think I think it can integrate with that. I could be wrong. That might be app enabled. Just let me look around. I don't see anything that says app enabled. So pardon me. No, you cannot control that with your phone. <laughs> anyway, back here in the bunkhouse. Now, obviously, we've got a door, a real door to close that off. And the primary purpose of this is for sleeping. Now, we've got a single 200 pound, uh, 250 pound rated bunk above with a uh, larger, what I call big kid bunk below. And then over here, I love that they gave you the easy access ladder to the upper big kid bunk over here. So you have three separate sleeping spaces. Now these little wildcat emblazoned back cushions, they're an odd shape. They don't quite like to stand up on their own. But the purpose of these is that if you want to, you can line them up against the back of that back there and kind of turn this into something of a daytime lounge. So the overhead bunk flips up out of the way. You throw a couple cushions down for a little bit of lumbar support, and congratulations, you got a cool little kid lounge here. But you see below that bigger bed, you maintain a little bit of extra storage space there. And then as we come around this corner, you can see additional dresser space for the kiddos right below that entertainment center. I love the arrangement of this bunkhouse. I think that this is an extremely well-executed bunkhouse arrangement. There's even storage shelves below the ladder here. We've got yet another big dresser storage space, and that's what's so cool about this one. You see that they're just keep, like every time you turn, you're like, holy crap, there's more storage, including a nice big hanging closet for the kiddos here. So their stuff stays in the bunkhouse, and it doesn't bleed over into the living area. That's one of the best parts about this floor plan. And then, of course, you've got the what I call sanity room, because you have a real door here that you can cl uh, close, and you can get the kids all loaded up on marshmallows and Mountain Dew, and they can just go... And they can, you know, go bananas, man. Now, one of the coolest parts about this floor plan, one of the reasons it's made uh, its Cougar counterpart, the 34 TSB, a very popular big bunkhouse here at Halet RV, is having the super slide with all the door side windows here. Now, at a glance, what you're going to say is, yeah, but doesn't that screw up my awning space? And the answer is it would, except for the fact that there's a second awning installed right on the face of that slide out that we'll see in a little bit later. One of my favorite things about the dinette here, being a bigger person, is that it's a, uh, you know, a no knee knocker. You can see that there's lots of open space under the dining table there where you're not going to, you know, bash your shins and, and, and kneecaps on things, which is hard for a bigger person like me to find something like that. Speaking of bigger, uh, larger eight cubic foot refrigerator freezer. Oh, look at that. More pendant lights here. I haven't even turned on yet. That's a 15,000 BTU air, by the way. I know that because since we built this RV, I remember how it was put together. Now, as I indicated, for traveling purposes, you've got easy access to the bathroom here, but not just for traveling. When you reach your destination, having the door so close to the toilet and bathroom area right there and no carpet uh, along that pathway, it's going to make this extremely easy to clean. Now, it's kind of odd placed, but it actually makes a lot of sense, guys. Having your master control panel up here for like your slide outs and your awnings up where the kids can't reach them, those big expensive mechanical items, it's actually kind of nice to have it up in that area. Now we do have a porcelain foot flush stool here in the bathroom and you have got plenty of leg room in this thing which is nice. A larger radius shower, skylight plus taller ceiling means that this is very, very tall person friendly in here. Now the bedroom. The one consistent bit of feedback that we heard on this floor plan, a lot of people, they were absolutely in love with it. Then they get here in the bedroom and they go, oh my God, oh my God, this is so small. Well, remember guys, this is a very, very long RV. It is focused on the bunkhouse and the living area. The other thing is they put exceptionally large cabinets above and beside the bed. So this is a short camp queen. You do have the room, however, to put in a full traditional 60 by 80 queen if you're interested. But the little detail stuff like having a, a main cabin light switch here in the bedroom, you don't, you still don't find that stuff in a lot of areas. So like I said, extra deep hanging closet on both sides. There is storage below the bed. And you do have a drawer for uh, the Mr. A and the Mrs. of the household, as it were, with TV hookups across from the bed. Though you'll see that nobody bothered screwing anything into your wall panels here. So those are just like new. 
outside here, everything generally looks pretty good. Near the outside kitchen area on the skirting and the doors, uh, the decals on the door of the outside kitchen, it looks like maybe it tail whipped a little bit and caught some brush or something. And I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I was going to point out some blemishes. That's that's a, that's all I can really find on this. This is very close to new. Beyond maybe it needs a hose bath, you know. It, it needs 30, 30 minutes of like quick wash down. That's all it needs. So you can see again, that's that door side super slide awning I told you about. So you've actually got dual awnings on this to give you more uh, patio space than you'd normally have. And you do have outside TV hookups here. That's the bracket. These are the hookups, so they're protected from the weather. Now, <coughs> pardon me. I'm so sorry. I know it's, it's terrible sounding and whatnot, but allergies here. I'm trying to do my best to fight through it and sound presentable, guys. I know I don't sound awesome. But large pass-through storage up front here with the easy one-hand magnet hold backs make uh, getting through here pretty simple. Three-quarter nose cap that is uh, automotive painted so it won't have like the uh, the fade issues. <laughs> that, that nose cap is kind of a funny story. Um, this is uh, uh, a Forest River product. The Surveyor is a Forest River product. And I don't know what happened, but basically these guys ended up using Surveyor's nose cap you know, it's kind of like one of those courtesy things. There's no rules that say they can't do it. But when Wildcat started building travel trailers again, they just they just literally stole Surveyor's nose cap. It really ruffled, ruffled Surveyor's feathers for a while. Funny story there. Power tongue jack, 30-pound propane bottles to spend more time between refills. Now, you see the little bucket here. Since this was a new RV purchased here at Halet RV, basic sewer, water, hose, surge protectors, etc., those were included with this. Now, it looks like their sewer hookups are here. I see they still got their water hose in there with the uh, pressure delimiter on it. I have not located an electric surge protector anywhere, so that might not be present any longer. But these are accessories you're not going to have to pay for on your next RV, basically. And I do like this... Um, enclosed private uh like partial docking station here this is where you can have your cable and your water hookups uh all put together now your uh sewer related stuff will be located over in this vicinity just to give you a reference point one thing i did want to point out though is if you look down the side of this like i said it needs a hose bath but you can see there's no sign of decal peel flake decay fade the skin is very glossy still um, you know, you can you can see a lot of gleam still left on the outside armor of this thing right here. Um, this has primarily an aluminum skeleton. Um, it does have a uh, a stick built roof, but it's also a very heavily rated stick built roof for more weight than than some laminated roofing could be. Wide stance axles. Now this thing is very long. I made no secret about that. It's about 37 foot long, I think, tip to tail. That's tongue to bumper, but. Uh, what these do right here is they will help you cheat that wheelbase to help the camper not wiggle and sway quite so much. Now there's a little, I don't know what this is, they, they must have had something like covering the tires maybe stuck to it that left a little bit of a signature. Um, it's a surface blemish that could probably get cleaned and scrubbed off there. Um, overall, like I said, everything I can really see looks to be in pretty darn good shape the spare tire doesn't look like it's ever seen the light of day the original outside grill is still present and accounted for on this one let me get over here a little bit to just kind of give you a nice look and view of her then we're going to get up here so this is where the outside grill would hook up to that bumper and you actually have two outside cookers here you have the original outside grill and then you have the stove top here but notice how this is all a nicer galvanized rolled steel countertop out here including the full drawer i mean this is uh if it's if you leave it open and it rains a little bit it's not going to be the end of the world the uh, larger outside kitchen fridge and a real sink with a real drain kind of polish this one off and uh i don't know it, it just real oh that's right i told you I'd, I'd show you some of the little skirting scars so where to go so these decals something some kind of stick branch something scrape those and then just a little bit of the same thing here down on the skirt level so if you don't care about a couple little service blemishes you can get a virtually new camper at a very used price tag and uh, you might actually still be able to qualify for same as new finance on this one due to its young age those are all good things so take care stay safe have fun and happy camping everyone